All right, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders, about to do something a little bit different. Um, I've been doing a bunch of the husbandry videos lately, but before I go ahead and do this one, I'm going to show how I alter my Exoterra Nano Talls to make them a little bit more suitable for tarantulas. Now, for years I haven't used these things. I had one, uh, gosh, maybe four or five years ago that I kept a piece of Letheria Vitata young adult in, and uh, for a while it was just sitting in my garage collecting dust. However, I have a bunch of old worlds that I'm keeping in the one gallon mainstay, the ones I get at uh, Walmart containers that need rehousings. And when looking around for something that would be suitable for them, I decided to give these things a shot again. And so far I'm liking them. Right now I have an HMAC in one. And as you're about to see, you're about to see in a moment, I will have one of my Psalmopeus Armenia in one as well. So, this one will start off as just showing a couple adjustments I make to these to make them a little more suitable, and then we'll go on to the actual transfer and some husbandry notes on this species. So without any more further ado, here we go. All right, before we get started with the rehousing, I'm just going to address something about the Exoterra Nano Talls. I haven't used these in quite some time. When I first got in the hobby, I had my piece of Letheria Vitana in one, and since read some things about them that weren't particularly great. One of the only issues I have with them is I do like cross ventilation and these guys have the wire mesh tops which not only allowed for, uh, for very quick evaporation but this little wire mesh they can get their toe claws caught in. Now this is more of an issue with terrestrial tarantulas and I've had terrestrial tarantulas in the smaller size of these and what I do is I replace the wire mesh with drilled plexiglass. Now to do this, I'm not going to demonstrate here because it can take forever, but if you can see there is a rubber gasket in there as the dogs click around because they think we're going for a walk. Sometimes you can pry out this gasket, get the end going and rip the whole thing out. Unfortunately, they do epoxy it in. Some people seem to find it's only on the corners. With this one here, if you look closely, I don't know if it's shown there, you can see some of the wires still in there because the gasket wouldn't come out at all. The entire thing was epoxyed in, so I had to basically cut the screen out. So what you do is cut it out, Measure a piece of plexiglass, drill some holes, epoxy or glue it right in there. And this is a little bit safer. It does allow for some ventilation. They can't get their toe claws caught. Now, a lot of people use these and have no issue with the arboreals getting caught up here. It is a possibility, but it doesn't seem like it's very common. It doesn't happen a lot. But better safe than sorry, I think, in most cases. So if you're going to use one of these, you can get away with the screen atop. Just know you're taking a chance of them getting their feet caught. That can leave them dangling, loss of uh, limbs. Um, it can get them hurt. So just keep that in mind. Another thing I want to address is the foam insert. Now, I just filmed some crappy footage of me doing this, and I'm going to put it up in the corner. I don't know how good it is. I haven't watched it yet, but Billy was busy cooking, so I didn't want to bother. But if you notice, when you get these, they have strips of foam that allow you to run wires up if you're doing heating elements and stuff. You want to get rid of that because what ends up happening, and hopefully I can get a picture of this from somebody online or on Facebook because I know it happens quite a bit, with these little strips, the tarantulas will wedge themselves down in between and it becomes a complete nightmare to get them out. So what you want to do, and again I will have this rolling up in the corner, is take a sharp knife or something like this, long sharp knife, and basically trim those things down until it's flush and then go ahead and put this back in. You can also just completely take the foam insert out. I've done that on other enclosures. But if you take this and cut the strips off, it doesn't leave any place for them to get behind it. And they do look pretty nice. They clean off very well with water because they will poo all over it. Or you can take them out and pick up cork bark. You can buy thin pieces of cork bark and you can cut them to shape and put those in there. But they do look very nice. A lot of folks, I know there's a lot of... Uh, People that will say these aren't appropriate for tarantulas. I think they can be. There is some ventilation in the front. It's not cross ventilation, so to speak, because there's no ventilation on the sides. But if you put enough holes in it, it does allow for enough airflow, and they do look very nice on the shelf and are good for medium size of oil. So this is what my P. Armenia is going to go into. Again, I like enclosures that open from the top, and this gives you the best of both worlds because we can open it from the front if we want to get in that way and get some good footage or open it from the top where I like to work. A little narrower than I usually like. I like the big, what are the uh, critter keepers, but for the most part, these look very nice on the shelf and I am gonna be picking up more of them. All right, so we're gonna to try to do a husbandry slash rehousing video with my Salmopeus Armenia. I've been trying to catch this one out for a couple of years now and unfortunately I've had no luck catching her out anytime. I had a feeding video that I finally caught her snatching something but I didn't hit record like an idiot so I didn't catch it. So what we're going to do here is first I'm going to talk about the new enclosure she's going into is one of the Exoterra Talls. 
and I just explained how I outfitted this one to make it a little more appropriate for tarantulas. What I got here is a big piece of cork bark. I bought it in bulk from Pet Mountain, and I love the way this piece kind of fits in here because these guys like to hide in the back, and as you can see with this one here, she's basically built dirt and web curtains underneath here, and she always stays in this area right there. So this will give her a place to web up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the sphagnum behind this because they will immediately usually use this to build up the dirt curtains. It gives them something to put up there. And then wedge this piece of cork bark in. Also have the water dish which go right up front. And there is moist substrate. Now as slings, I kept these guys in something about this size, 16 ounce deli cup. Although I did get her, which was a little bit bigger. So I didn't have her in one of these to start off picked her up as a juvenile, sex juvenile, but this would be good for the Salmopias, and this is what I keep most of them in. I'd add a couple inches of moist substrate because they will do a bit of burrowing and webbing. Piece of cork bark leaned at the side with some foliage to web to, and then I do keep the substrate moist until they put on some size. As they get bigger, it doesn't seem to matter as much. Then for my juveniles, we go into one of these, which is the one gallon mainstay that I get at Walmart. Although the last time I was in Walmart, they didn't have any of these. I'm hoping they didn't stop making them because I really like them. Although, as we'll see in the moment, the fact that the opening to this is smaller, the opening is smaller than the actual top, these corners become an issue when you're trying to get a spider out of here. So heads up in there. If you look in there, you can see the front legs jutting out. This is the right spider, right? <laughs> so we're going to go ahead... And, oh, wait a minute. We're going to pause this because I'm looking at it and I'm going, there's no orange on her feet. I grabbed the wrong enclosure. So I'm going to go grab the right enclosure. You can leave it running for a second. Okay. I'll cut this part out. <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> All right. There we go. Right spider. That would have been a first. Yeah. What the <laughs> heck is that? It's the same. Well, it's the same setup and she's in there. She just molted. I fed her a couple times. And she desperately needs a new house. This one, unfortunately, as I'm looking at it now, she'll probably need another house change. And a lot of times for the larges, I use the extra large, uh, what are those, critter keepers, which I like. They have a lot of openings, a lot of open space in the top because it gives me room to maneuver. This one will be good for a little while, though, and I'm sure she'll web this whole thing up. And they look pretty on the shelf. So what we are going to do is I'm going to try to slide this on the way. We're going to try to extract the cork bark, hopefully leaving her behind, but we'll see how it goes. And then as we go, I'll explain the little contraptions I have over here, which we use in another video, which never made it because bottom line, the object is to get her safely into this new enclosure. So Billy's always got the directive that things start going wrong and I need an extra set of hands, she'll put down the camera. And that's what happened when I rehoused my HMAC. Although it actually went very, very well overall. Billy did get some up close time with the HMAC. Did not get on her. She was just a little closer to it and he probably would have preferred. And I can very easily see this one shooting right up and out. Oh my god, if you can get a shot of her legs in there. So these guys are absolutely stunning. I just don't see mine a heck of a lot. And there's those orange chevrons. So we're going to go ahead and try to pull this out. So we're going to go, actually, give me those new stupid things. Bamboo. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Right, we're just going to go ahead. We're going to tease her right out. No, no, no. Try something. Best laid plans. Oh, this will be good sitting right in the baby seat. That feels really good on the bone. Unbelievable. Okay. I, we got in there. It's beyond just luck now. <laughs> this is unbelievable. There she is. Definitely need to fatten her up. Now, what I'm going to do is do the dangerous thing and open up the back of this. No, wait. What? No, you're fine. Shh. She won't jump on your face. Are you getting a good shot of her? So these guys are absolutely stunning. If you want to uh, get a zoom, there we go. Absolutely stunning. I have a thing with orange 
is one of my favorite colors. I love orange sweaters. And the combination of orange and black is just amazing. And I love Halloween. So here's what we have here. Oh, crud, that was done. I'm just going to block this off. So what I did here, and this seems that people seem to dig these and they help. This right here is what I use to get them out of these cages. So they can be a little tricky because of these ledges on the top. But what we have here is basically a Cumberland Farms container that I put some holes in so I can prod her out. You'll see that in a minute. And then this piece of cardboard is meant so it can block her completely off. So there's no avenue for escape, especially for the faster boreals. It's the safest way to do it. Um, to the clown, it'll inevitably go just pick them up with your hands. That's just stupid. It seems to happen in every video. Somebody comes on, talks about their manhood and picking things up. No, that's just dumb. Um, so then what we have here is we put this on top, and then the last time we put the HMAC on one of these, we slide this right over the top here. So again, we have eliminated all avenues of escape. I like this because she's not, Billy's not going to get bit. I'm not going to be sleeping on the couch. I'm not going to get bit. <laughs> Dogs aren't going to get bit. Everybody's going to remain safe and happy, and the spider's going to be its new home. And I will say, looking at this now, she's going to have plenty of room to grow. I thought she was a lot bigger than this. So now we're going to try to prod her down. Is the door shut all the way? That would be good, huh? No. Living on the edge. Wouldn't that be great? I forget getting her in with no issues. So we're going to try to get her down. And of course, I never... Somebody asked me where I put my holes and how I do it. And the, the fact of the matter is I'm not very good at putting the holes in the right place. There we go. So she was not happy there. Go, 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 go. Down. Let me turn you on. No, 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 no. Yeah, this is where we ran into trouble with the HMAC. Didn't it start to get out of the side? Yeah. And then, like, mm. Catch it with your hand or something. That didn't yeah. really happen. <laughs> this was not dangerous, right? Right, honey? No problems. All right, there we go. So I'm going to move this. I'm going to get the whole top uh, ready, but I, hopefully you can get a shot of her. All right, so this can go out of the way. She's going to go here right on top. Turn it on the corner. You want to hold that stay because one thing I've noticed when we do this extra zoom, it gets blurry. Sorry for the, oh, you see the little orange on it. So there we go, she's in her new home. Now what she will hopefully do, as I put this back on, is set up residence behind here. So if we turn this around, oh, there we go. That was a good shot of her. Perfect. Good. She will take residence up behind there. That gives her a lot of place to hide. She's probably gonna web this whole thing up with dirt curtains, but she can sit out in the open. We have the fake foliage. Really like the way this looks, and I'll probably start using these again. I. I'll admit I rallied against them for a while because the big drawback is there's no cross ventilation. But there is some ventilation in the front, ventilate the top, and the larger spiders seem to do quite well in it. Now, as far as adults, this will, we'll see how this goes. I believe they get about seven inches. This might be a little tight for a seven inch or so something a more uh, seven gallon size or so. The extra large critter keepers seem to work great. But this might work. We'll see how she goes in here. They don't need a heck of a lot of space and she spends most of her time hidden anyway. The substrate is moist. I will allow it to dry out in between, and then what I will do is do the old rain shower thing where I will sprinkle water down into the enclosure and let it kind of soak into some of the substrate, moisten things down. I have seen them drink off the glass. Temperatures, these guys do great with regular room temperatures. She's kept it, although she is kept in a higher shelf where the temperature hits about 78 or 80. Before that, when she was smaller, she was kept at about 72. 70 or so during the winter and in the high 70s to possibly 80 in the summer. They do great at room temps. Unfortunately, this is not a beginner species. And I do want to comment, Billy and I just went on our big walk where we walk the dogs and try to get some exercise and we're talking about this. And one of the things I find funny is Pisolotheria species get a bad rep for being very, you know, dangerous and basically not being good intermediate species or species for beginners or people who haven't been in the hobby for a while. But these guys can be just as bad. Now, notice my girl was, ooh, got a good shot there. My girl was very well behaved, but some people report very ornery adults. They can stand their ground. They can be defensive. So something to think about if you're getting into these guys. They are fast and unlike Pisolotheria, who will usually try to hide and use their natural camouflage and won't try to engage or show much defensive behavior. These guys can be defensive. They can and will bite. And supposedly the venom is a little bit more potent than normal New World species. So just something to think about. But again, they are beautiful. They are hardy as all get out. They are easy to raise. This one went from, what was, I got her like two and a half inches, I think. I want to say I got it from Tanya, if you're not trans, I think it was one of my first orders from her, if not the first order. And right now she's probably pushing about five and a half inches or so. So 
Gorgeous species. I will, again, when I'm trying to do the rehousings and the husbandry videos, I always forget something. So what I will do is put little inserts to show the different types of enclosures you can use and try to fill in anything I missed with the note section. But there we go. She's in her new house. It's going to go on the shelf. I will try feeding her again because she definitely needs to fatten up after that molt. Where is she? Oh, God, so gorgeous. And hopefully someday I will actually get a really good picture of her. Although I do have, I did get really good pictures of her before. That's right. When I shot that video, I got some really good pictures. Unfortunately, the video I never hit play. So there we go. My P. Erminia Venezuelan Sun Tiger. I'll have to put the common name. I'm terrible with the common names. It's got a cool common name though. All set in her new enclosure, ready to go. This will go on the shelf. And we can take a deep breath now and eat dinner because that went very, very well. Thanks so much for watching. Again, for anybody who hasn't seen any of my videos before, maybe you want to check a couple more out, I will usually put them around in here. If you liked it enough that you'd like to subscribe, you can hit the little circle right up there. Love hearing comments. It's been taking me a little while to catch up with them because I've been getting a lot of them lately, but please know I endeavor to answer every single comment on my videos. So I thank you in advance for if you take the time to comment or thumbsies up. Again, thanks so much. See you next time.